And as promised, part number two, the diatonic ascending phrases. Again, done with Warren in mind, and Warren doesn't pay me to mention his name. I think I must speak to my attorney. <laughs> okay, um, jokes aside, let's go back into this now. Now, first of all, they're diatonic, which means that they're a seven-note scale. The previous video, number one, where we researched this one over here, the pentatonic, or study the pentatonic. Penta means five, tonic means octave. Now we're getting diatonic, so it's a seven-note scale, so it's pulled from your C major scale, because everything here is in the key of C. But we're starting on the note B, even though we're in the key of C. So one more time, very important, just because you're in the key of C, or A minor being the relative minor, doesn't mean you have to start on the note A or on the note C. In this case, I'm starting on B, but the notes that I'm using are found in the key of C major, A minor. So it's not about starting note, it's about the collective of the notes, all the notes used together that determines key. And I'm stressing that because it's quite important. Sometimes we think the starting note is the key. Okay, now the whole purpose of here was we've some people find ascending patterns easier some find descending patterns easier i did a descending pattern like it something like that in the first video i'm sure you might remember that and um, i've noticed that different guitarists have got different sort of preferences depending on what's natural for their fingers and that so this one over here was motivated by trying to get some ascending fast easy phrases now, we're looking at repetitive patterns because I find a repetitive pattern means I can ascend much smoother, much quicker, and I can rely more on the feel than having to worry about changing finger positions. It actually becomes sort of easier without having to compromise sort of technique. It actually gives a nice smooth legato run. Now, the first phrase we said starts on B, fret number two, on the string number five, and we're going to go fret two three five and you'll notice that i'm picking only once you can see the pick in the corner they're busy waving at you and it's pick hammer hammer now that sequence of fingers you can see from the top one two pinky happens the same over here so the important lesson over here is that the sequence of the fingers the actual sequence that you're playing them in is repeated we're playing finger one two four finger one two four again it's repeated which makes it easier and it gives a very easy way to get ascending across the scale now if i'd go over here which is correct diatonic i wouldn't be using fingers one two and four anymore because finger two would give me this note which is b flat i want a b flat we want a b so I'm not going to change the finger sequence here. I want to keep my finger the same, my finger sequence the same. So I decide to start on B. And now I'm looking at the octave. So I'm skipping the note A, which is fine. There's no rule that says when you're doing an improvised solo, you have to use all the notes all the time. You're allowed to skip notes if it sounds cool for you. So I'm doing B, C, D, E, F, G, B, C, D. And it sounds quite cool. And it's a nice, easy way to get a nice, fluent legato. You can see the hammer on there. To add and work our way up the scale, to ascend up the scale. Now, the next one's going to start over here, which is fret 5. This is E, F, G. And then again, I wouldn't be able to play this one because that second finger would give me the wrong note. I don't want B flat. So I'd move up to B again. And you got fret 7, 8, 10. So we're working with octaves. You can think of it in groups of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then if I had an extra string, 1, 2, 3, somewhere down there, <laughs> I could do it. Or I could jump up with... And do that if I really wanted to. But I don't want that last jump yet. So one more time through, just to make sure you know the scale. Frets. Two, three, five, two, three, five, four, five, and so you're gradually going up your fretboard. And at speed, now that hole, I just like adding a bit extra because it sounds cool. So I'm busy putting a hammer on and pull off with it. This gives a bit of closure. Otherwise, without that, it sounds like this. It still sounds good. 
but I just like adding the extra. Just sort of closes it off quite nicely. Now, if I want to play and cross more of the fret or the neck itself, so I want to go from fret 2 to say fret 15, that's a large jump. And if I know my octaves, if I know that those two notes are here, and I know that those two notes, their octaves are here, I can take those six notes and do this. And I get this. So that's quite cool. So it's a nice way if you're doing your solo to jump across the fretboard. And you can then build obviously from that. So once you go to the top, you can do little changes and you can obviously include your favorite descending lines too. But the primary objective of this video, the goal of this video is to make sure you can ascend nice and easily. And this particular one, we're only using six notes of the diatonic scale but that comes from the diatonic scale and we're working with octaves. That's the goal there. And then obviously a bit of palm damping. Always sounds cool. So what I'm doing there is I'm bringing my palm in, bring the camera a bit closer. And you can see I'm resting on the bridge and it gives a bit of a muffle. Sounds quite cool and eh? it gives you a nice fast speed. And then part of the trick over there is as you go through, as you get to your target note, you lift the palm, and you can then lift up to get the note ringing nice and clear. Nice way to sit and do nice ascending fast phrases. Okay, I hope this is helping a little bit. And um, there's obviously a whole lot of different ways to ascend as well. There's um, other ways of doing two notes per string, for example. But those are more exercises that I use. I don't normally drop that actually into a solo where if I'm busy improvising, I'll happily put this into something like that. Now, to finish off, I'm going to go for a bit of a blues jam. I'm going to use the back track that I put together some time ago um, for Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out by Rick Clapton. I'm going to do first a bit of a jam with an acoustic guitar just to make something different. And I'm going to try and drop in some of these phrases from the first video some of the video uh, phrases from the second video that you're watching right now and we'll do a little bit on acoustic guitar then we'll switch over to electric guitar just to see and hear how they sound um, obviously these speed these, these exercises can be slowed down it's not about the speed um, you can play it as fast or slow as you like it's obviously personal taste but let's make them work and see what they sound like can they switch over to acoustic now backtrack on if you want to copy the battery, let me know. I'll see if I can try my, somehow try and send it to you. Here we go. Normal scale. Normal pentatonic. Now let's put that ascending. Works quite nicely. And then descending with a bit of pauses. Ascending, normal scale, those diatonics, so it's nice for little quick bursts. strings so there's no speed restraints it works quite nice and if you want to go more to a bluesy tone with maybe a, a nice strat something could be like this for example and very hint of overdrive Nice way to do the phrasing a bit there. Play with your timing. Don't keep it necessarily consistent. Speed up, slow down. Diatonic. 
you can sort of extend it, in other words, speed up while doing the phrase. Sort of quite difficult sometimes having to explain and solo at the same time because you're sort of thinking, how can I make it actually work? But play with the speed. Nice slow phrases, maybe a pre-bend. And then a quick phrase. Just sort of breaks the rhythm a bit. A pentatonic would normally work better, but diatonic's fun. Here's a pentatonic phrase. Then diatonic. Also nice, so there's no sort of fixed rule, it's all about phrasing. Pentatonic. Diatonic. So experiment, combine them, blue scale. So they all actually work. But the object of this was to get your ascendings. Second scale shape. Everything works out nicely and that's the purpose of this, of these exercises. Obviously I could do a high gain one now as well, but that's, I think that's enough on the idea. If there's any questions about this, please drop me a WhatsApp. The goal would be here was to try and get some ascending ideas. We can do other ones like this, which is quite nice. In fact, let's just add that one for an for a after shoot just because you still got a few minutes left on the video. Gonna use one finger, starting at fret number three. Pick it, slide it, string beneath it. Pick it, slide it to fret 8, string beneath it. Pick it, slide it up to 10, string beneath it. Pick it, slide it up to 12, string beneath it. You can do the 13 as well if you really want to. And then you up to 15 and you end up with 17. And you get this. Sounds very cool. And it sounds quite cool. And that, if you want to drop inside your phrase, could sound something like this with the backup again. Start with your typical, nice little double stop. And use your slide. And here's your ascending one more time. One finger solo. So there's so many different ideas of here. We could sit and put together a 10 hour video I'm sure, and be fun. But we obviously forget half the roof. So basically you've got your ascending over here with the pentatonic. You've got your diatonic. And we've got two different ways of doing it. And we close this with a cool little one finger. And the one at fret 7 that I put in there, it's negotiable, you don't have to put it there, it's an F sharp which technically shouldn't be there, but we can theoreticize that it's from the melodic minor. I don't want to go into theory, do it, if it sounds cool, fantastic, if it doesn't sound cool, don't do it again. Some of these riffs will work in different chord structures or chord sequences depending if the original used uh, melodic harmonic minor or natural minors, but that's not for this video. This video is to give you some nice, cool, practical ideas to sit and practice with. Hope you have an awesome one. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Send the questions. And if anything goes wrong, this was Warren's fault. <laughs> Warren, have a good day, buddy. And to all my friends out there, play loud.